What's going on everybody? It's your boy Fearless back at you with another one. So today we are going to take a look at how to make an emotional trap beat inside of Ableton. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. These are the realest tutorials for Ableton on YouTube right now. And I will not let you down. Without any further introduction, let's get right into this trap beat. Let's go with a D minor scale. So I got all my notes already laid out for me so I don't have to think about this at all. I'm gonna set them out here and we're gonna start building our pattern out. So we're first gonna start with some basic chords. All right guys, so unfortunately, I lost all my desktop audio because OBS screwed up on me. I even tested it. I even tested it before I make the video because I do it every time because it happens every once in a while, but it still didn't record the best desktop audio. So guess what? I'm just gonna explain to you how I made the beat as I went along, and this is probably gonna be even more valuable regardless. Okay, so basically what I did is I set up with the piano. You probably already saw that I got some of the chords together. Basically what I did here is I made some bass notes underneath, which I'm going to deactivate for now. So basically I had the bass chords. What I did is I started with the regular chord. This would be the bottom, this is the top. I took the middle note and I flapped it up. So normally it would be like this. So normally it would be like this. And I went ahead and I moved it up one octave. So I also took the bottom note right here and I also made that one up an octave and I took this note and put it up an octave as well. So I basically just layered these notes in really nicely with each of the notes I did the same exact thing and this is what it came out to be. All right, and that repeats over again. And then what I did is I went ahead and made some bass notes. So instead of just copying this whole bottom part here, I made some offset bass notes which are gonna kinda help the beat transcend into the next part. So let's activate these now. So basically I started with this root note F here right here and I kind of just started by making a simple beat like this right here and then I basically duplicated that over and then I dropped it down an octave and then I dropped it down another octave at the very end so it came out sounding like this Alright, so that's how we got our simple melody and I decided to make two of those so for the second one it's a little bit different okay so I basically copied that same MIDI down and now we played with some notes right here to actually give it some more flair so what I did is I put in some just random top notes like here and there and I just played around with it for a while until I got it just right just to give it a little more flair and made it more complex than the simpler one that we just did so the other one was basically just the chords and then the bass notes and this one's the chords the bass notes and the in-between notes that fill in all the gaps and it start and it sounded like this all right so that's how we got that sound for the complex piano beat and then what we did here is we put on some reverb or I use the Valhalla Vintage Reverb here and I also EQ'd out the highs and the lows from the reverb so that we just have the good sound from it. This is what it sounds like. All right, and what I did is I actually grouped it so that it could have a dry chain and a wet chain. So basically the dry chain is just the piano playing and the wet chain is just the reverb part. So I put the reverb on 100% and from there I actually dialed it in to the right dB. Okay, on top of that, we put some isotope vinyl and then another vinyl distortion plugin called cassette on top of that. And then an EQ just to cut out some of the lows in it. All right, so that's all we did for the piano. So on top of that, we made an ARP, okay? And what I did is I took the simple pattern from the piano and then I just got rid of the bass notes. Okay, so you can see there's no bass notes in here. And then also I raised it up one octave, okay? And this is what they sound like together. The complex and then the simple with the arp with some of the notes missing. And for 
this ARP, I just put on a simple cassette here, just some vinyl distortion, and then I also cut out the lows, all right? Simple as that. So next, I layered a clap and a snare together. And then I always love to do my 808 next. So basically for my 808, I just followed the root notes again, like we did with uh, bass notes in the piano that we played. You can see I have them down here so I know what to follow. So I started with the F notes, went down to the C sharp, and went down to the C from there. So you basically just followed it. I added in some extra notes to make it kind of, to make it sound kind of trappy. And then what I like to do at the end of my eight bar loops is kind of make it go a little crazier here so that it leads back in nicely. So it sounds like this. All right, so after we did the 808, we did the hi-hat, which took a long time. I always spend a while on my hi-hat. So basically, I just did a straight forward to the floor. Then I did some triplets, like you see right here. That's a long triplet. This is an even faster triplet. And then what I like to do is kind of offset some of these regular hi-hats. So instead of them being straight C all the time, I like to put them down to A or whatever note like that. So I basically just added these in and played around with it a lot. What I also did is I took the velocities and I changed them up so they're not all the same. If we zoom in here, you can see they're a little bit different here, but nothing too crazy going on. All right, so after we did that, we did an offset snare. Basically just a snare that plays on the off keys of where the actual other clap is playing. And we just put it in a couple spots, all right? We just copied the same thing over and we put an extra one right here. So it sounds like this. Okay, so for the last drum sound that we did, besides the kick, we did the open hi-hat. And we basically just put this on the first of every two bars. So nothing special there, all right? The last drum we did was actually the kick drum. So just the same pattern repeating over and over again that just goes well with the 808. We don't want to do anything too crazy here because we're going to let our 808 shine above everything else. Alright, so that was all the drums that we did. Alright guys, and this is how we arranged it. So you remember how we made the simple and the complex piano melodies? So this is why we used them. We used them so we could change it up continuously and make it sound really good. So basically we start off with this simple piano playing, which is also going to be our bridge into our second drop, alright? So this is basically where the beat stops, and this is where the artist can do their little chorus or whatever they want to do before the beat comes in again. Okay, and then we automatically transition into the complex piano with the arp that we did. Once we're done with that, we go back into the complex piano and then into the simple piano so that we're constantly changing up what the melody is. After that, we do two rounds of this again with the complex piano and the arp. And then we go back into our bridge and we repeat that all again okay and then basically what we do is for these three sets of eight bars right here we're doing all the drums all together except for on this last set we're taking out the hi-hats so super simple right all right so on this next part we're actually taking out the kick for this next part right here and we're just leaving the 808 and we take out all the drums right here except for the 808 for the first part for the first four bars and then we bring them all back in and then we flip flop it we take the 808 out here for this for first four bars but we leave in all the drums and then the 808 comes back in then we go into our bridge boom and then we just copy that over again and this is how we get basically a simple layout for our beat so let's take a quick listen to this
All right, guys, so that wraps up this tutorial on how to make an emotional trap beat in Ableton Live. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and also smash that like button for me so we can get these tutorials out. These are the realest tutorials in Ableton today. All right, guys, so I hope you had a good time. I know I did for sure, and I'll be seeing you guys again in the next one. Peace out.